If you're a real estate agent looking to get some extra prospecting, worried about, well, maybe I need to get some listings. Maybe a different way that we can get out to listing is expired listings. Well, if that's what you're thinking about, that's what this video is. Welcome. All right, what we're gonna talk about is expired listings and how to turn these missed opportunities from other agents into a success for you and a successful sale and turning in a listing into possibly three sales. Let's see what that talks about. What are we gonna talk about in this video? We're gonna start defining what they are, what the experience is, some options, how to find them, what to say, and what to do, some strategies on top of it. So without further ado, stick around. <laughs> What's up everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group with LPT Realty coming at you with some great information about exploring what it's like to be with our brokers at LPT, exploring what it's like to be an agent. Or if you're a newer or experienced agent, some extra tips on how to make your experience even better as a real estate agent. I've been through it all. <laughs> Not all, but a lot of it. I've been licensed in three different states. I've been the buyer's agent, been a team agent, single agent, and now a team lead. And I love it. And I want, and I've made a ton of mistakes and I want you to be able to learn from that, learn vicariously so you don't have to do it yourself and get on to being one of the rock stars in your real estate career. They always say that you are the sum of the three people that you surround yourself with or three voices. Let me be one of those voices to help you get to that next stage. All right, so let's get into it. Let's start about and talk about expired listings. All right, so who are expired listings? So expired listings are those people that decided to sell a home. They decided to use a real estate agent. This is all starting to sound pretty good, right? And then they put it on the market for a certain period of time and it just, well, it didn't sell. It just didn't sell. So uh, now they're at this point and they're like, I still need to sell this home. Okay. So what are they experiencing? Imagine an expired if you had just tried to sell your home what is your mindset, right? You're probably really frustrated. You could be frustrated with the agent. You could be frustrated with the market. You'd be frustrated with yourself. Like, why did I allow this to happen, right? There's a ton of different things that, that we could say are, uh, that are weighing on an expired's mind. Now, depending upon how good of a communication or whatever, like, what, what are they thinking? Like, what is this next agent gonna do? What am I gonna do with this asset? So they're gonna be looking at other options, right? They may relist with the same real estate agent. That's what most of them do, right? Uh, they could be looking to sell it themselves as a for sale by owner or a private seller. They could be looking at renting it out if that's an option for them. Just put it on the rental market and wait for the prices to come up to what I need. Uh, they could be looking at hiring somebody new. So there's all these different things of what they're gonna be considering. Now we know as real estate agents, there are two things why a house doesn't sell or a condo doesn't sell or land doesn't sell, right? Those two things are going to be price, whatever the market is being supported, right? Or marketing, is it visible, right? Those are those two things, all right? And when we think about this, when I say price, I mean market price. Did we list it at market price? What is a like-kind seller with a similar property willing to sell a property to a buyer is looking to purchase a like-kind property like theirs. How do we figure that out? Well, most of the time we can go into the multiple listing service or like on a property appraiser site or whatever it is in your state, and we can see what, uh, what things have sold for. If we have access to the multiple listing service, we can see what, you know, what it looked like. So what were the conditions? It could also have been some other factors of you know, they didn't allow people in at a certain time. <laughs> so there, there are a lot of different options of why these things didn't sell. Okay. So now we're prepping and we understand where the seller is coming from. Now you're like, all right, Tim, where, where are they? <laughs> where can I find these guys? All right. So if you want to find expired listings, the best way to go to find the ones that are new, most MLSs will come up daily and give you, Hey, here's what expired today. So you can get a list there. Now you can pay for other programs such as Mojo, uh, Vulcan 7 I think is a good one, Red X is one of the ones that our team uses, and they'll produce those, they'll link to your MLS, they'll put it together, they'll do a search, and the good, not, good thing about these paid services is that they'll give you numbers. Are the numbers always correct? Absolutely not. <laughs> 
but some are better. So your mojo dialer may work in your specific area or Red X or whatever that you're using um, could be able to do better in certain areas than not. That's what we've seen across the country. So whatever is working for you, they're going to give you a bunch of numbers. You're going to have to call some of them are wrong numbers, some of the agents numbers or whatever, but we're hoping that one of them is actually going to be the seller. Okay. So we get those. That's how we find them. And basically you have two different things that you can do really three. You can call them, call them on the phone you can go knock on their door or you can send them a mailer. Of all the things I just mentioned, the first one's going to be the most efficient. Why? Well, you're probably thinking like, Tim, isn't getting in front of somebody better than, than calling them on the phone? Yeah, it is. But how many places can you drive around in a certain amount of time versus how many times you can pick up the phone? It's efficiency, right? And when it comes to new expireds, it's all about speed. If you're the one calling at eight in the morning or the one calling at seven in the morning, I don't know if I suggest that, versus the next person that finally gets around to it at 11, it's usually with expireds, it's whoever gets to them first, okay? When it comes to listing appointments, you either wanna be the first or you wanna be the last one, <laughs> right? So I always say, go for the phone. If you don't get phone numbers, or maybe that's not an expense you wanna to go to, then drive around and go knock on the doors, okay? So those are the other ones. When it comes to mailers, maybe if you can get a list of expireds that were like a year or two years ago, I don't, I haven't had a good experience with either the agents that work on our team or any other team that said that, hey, I mailed, snail mailed a, a, a packet to an expired. And by the time that they received it, they already relisted with somebody else. Like I, I haven't heard anything other than that, uh, that anybody had any massive success on it. But older expireds, yeah, sure. Yeah, that might work for that. So when you give them a call, um, there's a couple of scripts that you can basically run with these. Uh, some of the ones that we use on our team is just to give them a call and ask, hey, this is Tim with XYZ Real Estate. Uh, I noticed that your home was removed from the multiple listing service. Do you still have any interest in selling it? Right. And the conversation could go anywhere from there. They'll say yes. They'll say no. They may say nothing at all because they're so exhausted from all of us other real estate agents calling them. Right. But the key thing, no matter what you say with them, is to get in front of them. Uh, one of the tactics we have used said, hey, let me come over and do an analysis on your on your home. You know, it won't cost you anything and I, I'll be willing to share the results with you if you'd like. When can I come over later today or would later this week be better? Right. And I, we usually ask too because they'll be like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that or whatever. And be like, OK, well, no problem. But before I let you go, let me ask you one more question. Do you know why the home didn't sell? If they do know, can you share it with me? Are you sure that's why? If it was something else, would you like to know? Just get in front of them. Even if it's not a listing appointment and you go and do an analysis on the home and see it, now you can always come back and be like, oh, let me recheck because it's either these two things. It was pricing or it was marketing. Let me double check to make sure that we were priced correctly. Obviously, I would have done that before I left, but let me go see if uh, this was priced correctly given the condition. And maybe it was marketing. Maybe nobody saw it. Maybe even, nobody even knew. So there's all these different ones. And this, this is just one example of what you can do um, in order to get in front of them. But once you are in front of them, man, you're awesome. Which is even better if you go to these listings and you get in front of the expires early enough in the day and get a hold of them before they go to work or whatever and um, get that face to face. Because nothing is quite as strong as that one on one in the same space connection. All right. So once you get that, um, then you can start kind of marketing from there. Now, the big thing, if they do say no, oh, I'm not going to relist, is you want to make sure to keep getting back to them. So I'm going to get into some of these strategies here uh, for expires. So some of the strategies that you want to do is first and foremost, you want it to be consistent. Am I going to prospect for uh, expireds Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. or 8 a.m. every single day? Am I going to do it three days a week? How long am I going to do? How many dials am I going to do? Connect with it. Make that goal specific. All right. Make it time bound. They say smart goals, right? I've done that in previous videos. What are smart goals, right? Time bound. All these different things. You want to make sure that it is specific, that it sets out to do, and that you hold yourself accountable to getting out and doing it. Using expires, calling one or twice and be like, oh, it didn't work for me. You didn't try. <laughs> you need to do this consistently. Consistently for what? About 90 days. Okay. And then tell me that it didn't work. 
How many did you call? I called one a day. That's not enough. You need to be calling, depending upon your market, you know, 10, 30, whatever, and just keep calling them until they pick up or they relist, right? Especially if you have their phone numbers, you're paying for that service. You might as well get as much out of it as you can. Uh, what I've found, at least in our market, is if you can sit down at least for an hour every day, every morning, and call these, you'll start to see consistency when it comes to getting those appointments, okay? But that's a big thing that you can do is just get out there and get in front of them. Remember, when you are setting appointments and they're like, analysis, I thought you wanted to come list my home. Yeah, no, I can do that too. I'd love to interview for that, right? If you are interviewing, you want to be the first one in or the last one in. I always prefer for the first one because I'm going to close them right then and there, right? I'll call the other agents. I don't care. <laughs> hey, sorry, agent so-and-so. Yes. Uh, they already listed with me. So make sure that you do that. Um, other thing besides that is I want you to understand that this is a numbers game. It's a numbers game when it comes to any sort of prospecting, when it comes to cold calling, because that's essentially what we're doing is you want to get out there and get as many iterations as you possibly can and get as in front of many people as you possibly can. I always train our agents as like you go until they say no or yes or F off, <laughs> all right? And just consistently stay in front of them. Don't worry, there are gonna be people that reject you, but all it takes is one person. And next thing you know, you've got a, a listing that potentially you know, is going to close and get you, what, uh, 10 plus thousand dollars or whatever your market has just for that listing. And if you market your listing correctly, which you should, you should probably get about two buyers off of it. So that's three transactions that you could pull just from a listing versus maybe just trying to work with buyers alone. So it's really, really important that, that we do this uh, when it comes to expireds. Understanding, resiliency, consistency, and keeping yourself accountable, that's what's gonna win the day when it comes to expireds. And I'll also venture that if expireds is going to be one of the ways that you're going to procure business, I highly encourage that you have two other tiers for you to continue to prospect on because it may be a really good season in the fall for expireds then fall off when it comes, you know, towards the winter season, right? And then it could be, you know, during that time, you're cultivating your sphere of influence, your past clients, right? Or that you could be going after for sale by owners, could be circle prospecting, whatever it is that you want to do. Make sure that you have that plan in place. All right. Well, that's all that I have for you for expired listings and turning missed opportunities into success. If you have any questions about anything I mentioned here, I love coaching you guys, giving you some uh, information. Please leave it here in the comments below, and I'd love to get back with you. If you are considering uh, moving up to the Northwest Florida or becoming an agent in here or even want to interview with our team or just interested in LPT Realty, give myself a call. I will personally have a conversation with you about that uh, and to see if that's going to be a right fit in any of those respects. Give me a call, text, or you know, find me on social media, email, whatever you need to do. I'd be happy to chat with you about that. But again, my name is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with LPT Realty. We'll see you in our next video. Take care. So you're thinking about LPT and you're wondering, what is this brokerage all about? Is it going to allow me to kind of elevate my career in real estate? What sort of commission structure, what sort of training? What is it that's kind of this special sauce that may help me get to my next level of career? Well, in this